Farmers are waiting to hear the details of what could be a financial lifeline as farm bankruptcies this year are surging. They call it food aid, they call it modern agriculture, but across Africa, a silent war is unfolding not fought with guns or bombs, but with seeds and satellites, because somewhere between the soil and the sky, the United States has found a new battlefield, and Africa is saying no more. For decades, U.S. agribusiness giants Monsanto, Bayer, Corteva have poured billions into helping African farmers. They promised higher yields, modern technology, and food security. But behind the slogans was something darker, total seed control. African farmers discovered that the free seeds were genetically modified and patented, meaning they couldn't e-replant them the next season without paying American companies again. What was once Africa's heritage seed-free, local, and ancestral was slowly being replaced with a foreign barcode. And this time, the battlefield wasn't e-colonial land, it was the genetic code of Africa's food itself. One by one, African nations began to resist, Tanzania rejected GMO maize, Zambia banned Monsanto's genetically modified corn, Burkina Faso once a U.S. GMO experiment hub kicked out the entire cotton program, claiming, it degraded their soil and destroyed local fiber quality. It was quiet at first, but then came a wave of defiance the Pan-African Seed Sovereignty Movement. Across 20 nations, farmers began reviving ancient seed banks, local seed fairs, and national seed laws effectively outlawing American patents from their soil. Washington was furious, billions in agricultural contracts were suddenly useless, and worse Africa was starting to feed itself. But while Africa fought seed control on the ground, another battle was happening in the sky. Satellites operated by U.S. agencies NASA, USDA, and private intelligence firms were quietly mapping every inch of Africa's farmland. Officially, they said it was to monitor droughts and help food security. Unofficially, they were gathering strategic data soil fertility, crop density, rainfall, mineral content everything a corporation needs to decide which lands to dominate next. Africa's crops were being watched, scanned, and predicted not by local governments but by foreign algorithms thousands of miles away. To Washington data is the new diamond and Africa's soil is the next Silicon Valley. When African scientists raised alarm they found something disturbing. Most of the agriculture tech being offered by U.S. firms' drones, sensors, climate apps came with data-sharing clauses, meaning every farm that used them was unknowingly uploading Africa's agricultural DNA straight into American cloud systems. It was agriculture espionage digital colonialism disguised as innovation, and that's why countries like Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Kenya began building independent satellite and data programs refusing to let big tech or foreign agencies own their information. In 2024, the African Union even proposed a continental data shield a firewall against agricultural surveillance. Africa was no longer the world as testing ground, it was becoming the world as agricultural firewall. As Africa asserts independence, Washington has quietly retaliated, trade restrictions, aid cuts, research, partnerships suddenly withdrawn. But African farmers aren't backing down. A new wave of agro-entrepreneurs is emerging young Africans using AI and indigenous seed tech to revive local farming. From Ghana to Uganda, youth cooperatives are creating digital seed banks that are 100% African-owned. They say, we don't need GMO miracles, we need ownership. And that's what makes Washington nervous in Africa that grows its own food, programs its own satellites, and owns its own data, because this was never about just food. It was about who controls tomorrow's hunger. The U.S. built its empire through oil and dollars. But in the 21st century, the new empire runs on data and DNA. And Africa just unplugged from both. By rejecting U.S. seeds, Africa didn't e just reject GMO crops, it rejected an entire system designed to make it dependent forever. They called it aid, they called it charity, but Africa saw it for what it was control. And now, from the soil beneath our feet to the satellites above our skies, Africa is taking it all back. This is not just a story of seeds, it's a story of sovereignty. And for the first time in modern history, the United States isn't the one planting the future Africa is. In the United States, this new African resistance has shaken the agricultural elite. Companies like Monsanto, Cargill, and DuPont invested billions expecting permanent control. But their deals are collapsing one by one. In 2023, Ethiopia refused to renew a $500 million GMO maize license. In 2024, Nigeria blocked a seed patent renewal filed by an American biotech firm, citing national biosecurity threats. And in 2025, a coalition of 10 African states announced a continental seed registry banning all foreign seed patents not approved by the African Union. To Washington, it was an earthquake. To Africa, it was liberation. To secure this new power, Africa launched something unprecedented, the Pan-African Data Shield. 
It's a massive digital firewall designed to block an authorized satellite and cloud access to agricultural databases. Every crop scan, every soil reading, every drone image now goes through African encryption protocols. U.S. agencies that once accessed African data for climate research now find their requests denied because Africa finally learned data is wealth and whoever owns the data owns the food. Her name is Amina Moyo, 28, data scientist from Tanzania. She leads one of Africa's first AI-driven agricultural defense systems, nicknamed Project EarthPulse. Using machine learning trained entirely on African soil data, her algorithm predicts pest outbreaks and drought cycles more accurately than any U.S. model. But that's not what scares Washington. What scares them is that she built it without U.S. funding, without U.S. servers, and without U.S. permission. Amina says, we've always had the intelligence, we just stopped renting it out. As Africa builds its agri-intelligence muscle, new alliances are forming. In 2025, the African Agri-Tech Compact TOTC was signed a continental pact uniting 14 nations to share satellites, data, and AI infrastructure. Their goal? To ensure Africa controls seed production, soil research, and digital mapping for its 1.4 billion people. The Compact's motto says it all. No food without freedom. No freedom without data. Meanwhile, African engineers are working with partners in India, Brazil, and South Africa countries tired of U.S. monopolies to build open-source satellites and seed technologies. A new global bloc is emerging a South-South food alliance that no Western media dares to discuss. In Washington, panic has turned to strategy. Congress hearings now mention Africa's agricultural data threat. Lobbyists push new bills disguised as food partnerships. But African leaders see through it. The old playbook offer aid, control markets, dictate prices no longer works. Africa has built its own pricing algorithm for exports, using data from 30 national ministries. It decides how much cocoa, maize, and cotton are worth not Wall Street. The U.S. can't stand it, because Africa is no longer just feeding itself. It's rewriting the rules of global agriculture, but make no mistake the war isn't over. U.S.-funded NGOs are quietly infiltrating farmer programs again, rebranding GMO projects as climate-smart agriculture. Foreign satellite firms offer free imagery that secretly extracts metadata from African databases. It's a new kind of espionage corporate, digital, invisible. Yet this time, Africa isn't defenseless. Cyber units across Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa have begun monitoring and countering unauthorized data access. For the first time, the hunters are being watched. The future of African agriculture isn't foreign, it's local. It's coded in native languages, powered by clean energy, and protected by African mines. The next decade will see Africa's first fully autonomous agro-network a fusion of AI, blockchain, and indigenous knowledge tracking every seed from soil to market without a single American satellite in the loop. This is the real green revolution, not one imported from Washington but one built from the ground up by Africans who refuse to be experiments ever again. They watched our lands from space. They patented our seeds. They called us dependent. But now Africa has satellites of its own, firewalls of its own, and a future grown by its own hands. The war for Africa's food is no longer secret. It's open. And this time, the soil remembers who it belongs to. Because in the age of digital empires, the real power isn't who feeds the world, it's who owns the roots. October 12, 2025. A date now etched in modern history. That was the day Africa stood up not with weapons, not with soldiers, but with seeds. It began with a single vote at the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. And ended with Washington's agricultural empire trembling. The African Union has officially nationalized all foreign seed patents and launched the Pan-African Food Defense Treaty. In plain words, Africa just took back its soil. After years of quiet resistance, 24 African nations signed a single document, the Pan-African Food Defense Treaty PAFT. The treaty declares all foreign-owned seed patents void within African borders. It bans genetically modified imports not approved by the AU. And it authorizes member states to seize and nationalize U.S. agribusiness assets operating illegally. We are not breaking ties with America. We are breaking dependency. That line went viral across the continent. Within hours, Monsanto, Cargill, and Corteva saw their African operations locked, warehouses seized, and field offices. Shuttered. Africa was no longer negotiating, it was reclaiming. In the United States, panic turned to fury. The U.S. government is considering sanctions on African states following the seizure of American agricultural assets. 
Behind closed doors, trade lobbyists called it a declaration of food war. Internal memos leaked from the U.S. Department of Agriculture revealed the truth. If Africa controls its own seed and data markets, the U.S. loses $400 billion in global agricultural leverage. The world's breadbasket was breaking free and the empire that once fed on it was suddenly starving for control. Three days after the treaty, something strange happened. African agricultural servers began crashing. AI systems predicting rainfall went offline. Satellite feeds showing harvest data went black. Hackers flooded the networks. At first it looked like a random cyber glitch, but investigators soon traced the attack to foreign IPs originating from Virginia home to several U.S. defense contractors. It wasn't an official declaration, but everyone knew the agricultural war had gone digital. They wanted to erase our systems, but we had backups. Offline, rural, encrypted. African farmers became our data soldiers. In an extraordinary move, rural cooperatives across West Africa switched to manual seed tracking, storing records on solar-powered local servers. Even a cyber attack couldn't stop the harvest. Within days, American networks flooded the airwaves with panic. Africa's decision threatens food stability. Western food aid suspended. But African journalists fought back online under the hashtag hashtag our seed sour future. Millions joined the digital protest, exposing decades of U.S. manipulation through seed loans, fake aid, and chemical dependencies. A young Ghanaian reporter went viral when she said on live TV, you don't give a man seeds and then own his hunger. Inside the African Union chamber, diplomats from the U.S. demanded a reversal of the treaty. This decision will isolate Africa from the global economy. Then maybe it's time the world adjusts to Africa. The room erupted in applause. That was the turning point, the symbolic moment the global south rallied behind Africa, India, Brazil, and even Indonesia publicly supported the treaty. For the first time, Africa wasn't alone. As U.S. sanctions kicked in, African states launched a countermeasure, the African Commodity Corridor Account, a trade route connecting West, Central, and East Africa through new digital barter systems. No dollars. No SWIFT no Western oversight. Instead, nations traded seeds for technology, fertilizers for energy, and grains for machinery all priced in Afropay, a pan-African digital currency backed by gold and agricultural output. By turning its crops into currency, Africa just created the world's first agro-backed economy. Within months, African food exports surged to Asia and South America bypassing U.S. trade routes completely. Then came the moment the world couldn't ignore. On December 6, 2025, in Burkina Faso, the nation that once kicked out Monsanto's Gmo Cotton Africa held its first continental seed festival. Millions of farmers gathered, ancient seed varieties once forgotten sorghum, millet, phonio, teff were replanted and shared freely, without patents, without contracts, elders. Wept. Youth cheered. It was more than agriculture. It was redemption. This was the day Africa remembered its roots and rewrote its destiny. Months later, even Washington had to admit it. Sanctions weren't working. Africa's food production didn't collapse, it doubled. Global markets adjusted to African independence. Even U.S. farmers began protesting, demanding their government respect Africa's autonomy to prevent global shortages. For the first time, the U.S. no longer dictates food policy in Africa. That's historic. Behind that polite analysis was quiet panic. Because if Africa can take back its seeds, what stops it from taking back its minerals, tech, and trade routes next? From Dakar to Dar es Salaam, a new generation is rising, calling themselves seed defenders. They are scientists, coders, and farmers blending AI with indigenous farming traditions. Their motto, no algorithm can predict our soil better than our ancestors. The Pan-African Food Defense Treaty is now more than policy, it's a movement. Universities teach seed sovereignty as national security. Agricultural satellites are managed by African youth. And the world's newest export powerhouse isn't a corporation, it is a continent. They tried to own our seeds. They tried to scan our soil. They tried to write our future in a foreign language. But Africa has rewritten the story in its own code, its own rhythm, its own roots. The day Africa took back its seeds wasn't just a rebellion. It was the birth of agricultural independence. And somewhere beneath the same stars that once watched over colonial plantations, a new Africa is growing one harvest at a time, because in this century control no longer grows from power. It grows from ownership, and finally Africa owns the soil, Africa owns the sky, and Africa owns tomorrow. 
They thought Africa would always need help. They thought we'd always borrow seed, borrow tools, borrow hope. But the soil remembers it remembers every root that was planted before the colonizer came. And it remembers who it truly belongs to, because this isn't just the story of rejecting U.S. seeds. It's the story of reclaiming destiny. In 2025, a quiet revolution began to bear fruit. Africa's new agro-intelligence network went live a continent-wide platform tracking rainfall, soil health, and crop yields using African-owned satellites and AI tools. No foreign login, no hidden contracts, no American cloud, just Africa. Watching Africa. When we control our food data, we control our future. AU Commissioner for Agriculture for Washington, it was a nightmare. For Africans, it was independence reborn. In Washington, lobbyists scrambled. The Senate Agriculture Committee questioned why Africa was turning away from U.S. partnerships. Behind closed doors, the phrase food sovereignty threat appeared in leaked reports. But for African farmers, it was simple. They weren't anti-America. They were pro-Africa. And in every village, in every green field from Ghana to Malawi, that message spread like wildfire. If we can feed ourselves, we can free ourselves. In rural Mali, a 70-year-old farmer named Daisata held in her palm a seed her grandmother once grew. She whispered, they called this seed poor, but it fed kings, those words. Echoed through African history, the old seeds returned. The soil healed, the yields rose without the need for foreign modification. And as billions were poured into GMO propaganda elsewhere, Africa's quiet success became undeniable. Farmers unions from Asia and Latin America began asking how did Africa do it? The U.S. once held power through the dollar and data, but now Africa was building power through soil and software. When the African Continental Free Trade Area AFTA integrated agriculture tech into its economic blueprint, it became clear. Food wasn't just an industry, it was a weapon. And for the first time, Africa was holding it. American corporations that once dictated prices and patents now had to negotiate on Africa's terms. The seed war was no longer one-sided, it was a chess game Africa was finally winning. This story was never about rejecting the West, it was about remembering who we were the first cultivators of the earth. Long before laboratories, Africa had its own science. Long before satellites, Africa had the stars. And long before patents, Africa had the promise that every seed planted in its soil belonged to its people. That promise is being fulfilled again. So when you hear that Africa rejected U.S. seeds, no, it wasn't an act of defiance, it was an act of remembrance. Because Africa has finally understood, control the soil and you control survival, control the data and you control destiny. And together they form the real currency of the future food freedom. The United States called it a setback, Africa calls it rebirth. And in this rebirth, the continent isn't asking for permission, it's planting a future the world will soon depend on. This is the soil that built civilizations, and now it's building sovereignty. They tried to own it, they tried to patent it. But Africa has taken it back, because the land never forgets its children, and neither will history.